it's the first week of our stay in Seoul and today is Thursday. The first three days we just had a rest and didn't walk a lot, but still we went to play board games at Red Button. It's a cool place with many board games, different scoring sheets and interesting spaces reminding the hostel. We played our favorite game Katan, which we used to play a lot. And it cost 3000 won here per hour. We also visited a sushi restaurant with a quite interesting format. You can order a sushi set starting from 13,000 won, but only from 11.30 am till 3 pm. Two chefs prepare it right in front of you, serving one piece at a time. And here they are! Finally, we enjoyed this dessert, which I believe is rice pudding. The most important thing that despite the cost, the quality is amazing, so I can definitely recommend this place. Finally, we visited fortune tellers and Kosti took the opportunity to learn about his career future. We don't fully believe in it, but why not give it a try, right? So today's plan is to visit Things Nature Cafe, which is located in Honda district. It's a cute little cafe with a couple sheep in the pen outside. The cafe itself looks really cute and nice. To get inside pen with ship you need to buy some drinks or desserts. They are super sweet and you can hang out with them and pet them. Funny thing with the toilets here, you need to get this key, or this one, or this one, and toilet paper here also, and go somewhere outside. Friday was a rainy day, so we decided to stay home. Here are some city pictures for you. Saturday seemed to be the coldest day during our stay in Seoul, but we braved the cold and went for a walk. First we visited a shop on Insadon Street selling Yang Yang, a sweet dessert made of red beans paste, agar and sugar. It's a fresh food so you need to keep it in the fridge, and as they say, the best way to enjoy this sweet is to have it cooled and sliced with a cup of tea. Just like last time I chose raspberry flavor and Kostya went for the green tea flavor. The raspberry one resembles homemade raspberry jam, very delicious. So, as I mentioned, it was very cold and windy that day, so we decided to go for tea at one of the Korean traditional tea houses. This place was incredibly cozy and warm. I even started feeling sleepy. The hosts were fantastic and the atmosphere was delightful. We ordered dried persimmons for dessert along with two cups of tea. Let's explore in more detail. The dried persimmon plate consisted of gangan san, which is walnuts wrapped in persimmons, yokkwa, Korean honey cookies formed by mixing honey and oil with a fine flour powder, and gangjeon, crispy snack and our case made of black sesame. The tea selection in Korea is extensive. I got the chucha or jujube tea, which is made by boiling dried jujubes, or more often a preserve is created by simmering dried jujubes on low heat for about 8 hours until it becomes a sweet syrup. This syrup is then used to make the tea later. Its taste reminded me of apple puree and it's a perfect choice in such weather. And Kostya had Sujin Gua, the Korean cinnamon punch. It's a traditional Korean drink made by boiling ginger and cinnamon with honey or sugar to make dried persimmons and pine nuts to float. In the past, Sujin Gua was considered a luxury drink because cinnamon wasn't produced on the Korean peninsula, so it had to be imported. And honey and sugar were also hard to get. Next we headed to Gyeongbokgung Palace, the main royal palace of the Joseon dynasty, the last dynastic kingdom of Korea. It was founded by the first king of Joseon, Taeyeo, in 1395. I like that people rent hanbok and stroll through the palace. It adds a special atmosphere. I really wanted to wear one, but it was so cold that I decided not to risk it. Besides, a few minutes later, I was freezing again, so we entered into a cafe on the palace grounds. I bought postage stamps there, and there is also an opportunity to take a booklet and stamp it. Cool souvenir to remember. Now it's 3.30 pm, and it's a huge problem to find some place to eat. So we came here, 
and got some bagels. Our next place is the oldest bookstore in Seoul. I think you heard about it. Deo Bookstore, hidden amidst traditional Hano houses, is the oldest bookstore in Seoul, established in 1951. Today it serves as a gallery cafe, so you must buy a drink before entering. The atmosphere inside is incredible, like stepping back in time. And before you enter these rooms, make sure to take off your shoes, so as to keep the place pristine. And if you're part of the BTS ARMY or UN, you'll likely recognize this place. Namjoon visited bookstore twice and you can spot this bookstore on I Use My Flower bookmark album cover. Now we came to Pomodoro. It's a cafe which is located near Langamon Square. So we're waiting in line under these infrared heaters. Yes, we had a meal at Pomodoro. They offer delicious pasta, although it's a bit pricey. Afterward, we headed home to enjoy our yingying. Good morning from Seoul Pastry. It's so nice place. Whee! If you want to feel the Christmas spirit, this cafe is a perfect choice for you. Look at this Christmas tree and bear and all these cute toys and details everywhere in sight. Let's talk desserts. They are not only visually appealing but also delicious. We tried the cream brulee and a chocolate donut shaped like Rudolph. It was so yummy. Then we strolled through the hidden corners around Honda. We turned from the main street expecting to find another street, but unexpectedly found ourselves in a labyrinth with charming cafes, shops, buildings, and everywhere seemed inviting to explore. We chose to have ramen and happily headed home. Thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye-bye!